I'm Patrick Schmidt. I'm the founder and CEO of Care Health. The problem that we're solving is medication adherence. The way that we're solving it is by developing a small wearable medication monitor that informs personalized dosing and medication adherence in real time. Okay, we're uh, getting ready to conduct our first human trials. We're a medtech-backed uh, um, company from uh, a group of, of experienced angel funds, and uh, we're, we're getting ready to raise a $3 million seed round. Okay. Prior to this venture, I was part of multiple exits, and uh, I founded this company because I had a personal experience that had a profound impact on me. I'll tell you that, and I'll tell you more about that in a, in a few moments. Essentially, you can think about our solution as a continuous glucose monitor, but instead of monitoring glucose, we're monitoring medication levels. And even though our sensor can detect multiple medications, we're going to prove our platform capability first with methadone, which is used to treat opioid addiction. Why opioid addiction? Two reasons. One, because I had a personal, exp uh, I had a close family member that struggled with opioids, and that's the personal experience that gives me the passion to want to do something in this space first. Two, there's an, a very urgent need for solutions that keeps patients from dropping out of methadone treatment. Why is it so urgent? Because of illicit fentanyl. Illicit fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin, which means that those patients that are addicted to illicit fentanyl have very, very high tolerance rates, tolerance levels. So um, what that means is that when, when patients get to that place, the last remaining options is methadone treatment. But unfortunately, there are two major drawbacks to um, this otherwise safe and efficacious medication. One, it takes too long to get to a therapeutic dose because of the high tolerance levels. And two, once patients, have to, once patients get to the therapeutic dose, they then have to physically go to a clinic every day in order to prove compliance. Yes, every day. Those two factors combined cause very high dropout rates, patients relapsing, going back to using fentanyl, um, overdosing, landing in the ER. Okay, and mind you, these are all patients. They've decided to leave the cycle of addiction and lead a better life, but they keep getting pulled back because it's so hard to stay in treatment. So here's the elegant solution that we've designed to break this vicious cycle. It's a small wearable monitor that uses a proprietary electrochemical sensor to help clinicians titrate patients to a therapeutic dose quickly and safely. Once they get to the therapeutic dose, they can then use our monitor to demonstrate compliance remotely without the, cl the, the daily clinic visits. It would be, it's truly life-changing for methadone patients. It would increase the chances they'll stay in treatment and escape this vicious cycle of fentanyl addiction. One of the compelling things about this market is that it's large and it's growing. Just the SAM alone is $5 billion uh, annually, and we expect it to continue to grow due to the presence and the rise of illicit fentanyl. Based on the patient and the clinician feedback we've received, we expect adoption rates to be 50% eventually. That's 5-0. Similar to continuous glucose monitoring, our business model is based on reimbursement at $5,000 per patient per year. And because it's so expensive when patients drop out of treatment, the business case is very, very compelling. From a go-to-market perspective, it's very straightforward. There are only 2,000 methadone clinics in the entire country that are authorized to administer methadone. Um, of those, 600 are operated by the seven companies that you see here listed. Uh, the reason that you see community medical services highlighted is because we already have multiple programs uh, in progress with them. Uh, there are chief scientific officers on our advisory board. Uh, they'll be our clinical trial partner and expect them to be uh, our first in line for early adoption. To put this into context, for us to reach $100 million in annual revenues, it takes 20,000 patients, which is a little bit more than 10% of the 200,000 patients that you see here. Now, clearly, methadone monitoring is the right place for us to start, uh, but you're want, probably wondering, uh, does it also work for other medications? And the answer is, Yes, and let me show you how. Uh, there's a, an electrochemical assay that gets coated, that's our secret sauce, gets coated on these tiny little microneedles that are pain-free. That assay, via oxidation, detects certain analytes, including methadone as well as other analytes. The sensor then transmits that information via low-power Bluetooth to an app, patient app, goes to the cloud, and then it gets distributed to clinicians. 
We identified this need to monitor methadone in late 2021. Uh, since then, we've migrated our chemistry from uh, screen print electrodes to wire sensors to microneedles, which is where we are today. Uh, later this year, uh, we're going to conduct, conduct our first in human studies. We've conducted a series of NN1 studies before. And as you can see the, 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 over here, the sensor, how small it is when it's applied to a, to a human being. I can attest personally that it's, it's pain-free. Uh, and then we will, uh, we will then convert our clinical prototype to the wearable version, which we'll go to market with um, subsequently. In 2022, we conducted a groundbreaking study with methadone patients. And in that study, it's never, it was the first of its kind, in that study we confirmed that methadone is actually in human interstitial fluid, it's, it's, and the levels are higher after patients have taken a dose than before they took the dose. Okay, we also established that there's a direct correlation between the methadone levels in ISF and in blood. And what you see on the, on the, right hand, on the left hand side there, right for you, uh, is that the, our in vitro sensor performance covers the range of what we expect to see in vivo based on the clinical study that we've, uh, that we've performed. So far, we've been incredibly capital efficient uh, thanks to non-dilutive funding. We raised a seed round in late 2022 from a series of uh, medtech savvy funds, uh, including Cove, a new fund, Medical Device of Tomorrow, and Chemical Angels. Uh, we used the proceeds of, those, uh, of that raise for a very, very productive 2023, which has gotten us ready for our first in human study later this year. Once we complete that first in human study, that'll see us through our Series A, uh, which will get us to our next value creating milestone, which is regulatory clearance. Uh, many of you know that, uh, most of you know that uh, device companies are usually acquired uh, post regulatory clearance. We'll have that opportunity as well, but we uh, certainly, as you get further to the right, uh, the potential exit becomes much, much more lucrative. There are already uh, companies in, in the market with solutions that monitor methadone, but none of them, um, well, some of them monitor methadone adherence, but um, none of them monitor adherence and inform personalized dosing in real time. Our solution is unique uh, because it does both. It's also pain-free and convenient. <clears throat> if anyone would try to enter our space, they would have to try to do it in a different way. We filed several patent applications to protect our methods uh, to prepare the device as well as our assay. And the, the company owns all the IP outright. There are no licensing fees or royalties. We're well on our way from a quality uh, management perspective. Uh, we uh, this is going to be a de novo clearance process based on our FDA pre-sub meeting, and we already talked about the, the compelling business case for reimbursement, because it's just so expensive when patients drop out of treatment. To make this happen, we've assembled a team of experts in med tech, chemistry, and engineering, as well as clinical expertise. From the logos on this slide, you can tell that we're leaning heavily on people that have done this before, primarily in the glucose space. Um, personally, I've already talked about uh, having been part of multiple exits, so together we have the right team to make monitoring of medication levels in real time a reality. We've assembled a heavyweight board, uh, advisory board uh, we, uh, that will provide us clinical, regulatory, legislative, and commercial guidance. I especially want to highlight Brenda Davis uh, over here. Uh, Brenda has been a methadone patient for 27 years, and she is a patient advocate. Uh, our company DNA is, is uh, is, is embodied by patient centricity, and certainly having her on our board uh, embody, uh, reflects that. In closing, we're fulfilling and addressing a very high unmet need with a very elegant and highly scalable solution. We have a fantastic team that knows how to execute, and uh, what is even more compelling for you as investors is that you're making an investment in a life-changing solution for methadone patients that has a positive impact on the opioid crisis and which is a national epidemic. With that, I'm going to conclude. Thank you.